Hello guys and girls, welcome to something a bit new for CQ Gaming. This is episode one of Steve's somewhat seamless slot. There's a play on words for you. Right, to the chase. Obviously COVID's come in play and there's been tight restrictions in the UK and in certain regions of the UK. And it's kind of somewhat affected our ability to uh, get together and play some Warhammer 40,000. So we come up with a bright idea of each recording uh, a monthly video. So myself, Anthony, Dane and Mark will be doing this monthly. Uh, it could be any topic we want to choose in relation to Warhammer 40,000. It could be painting tutorials, how to build scenery, cleaning your brushes, law, building data, uh, battle sheets, etc. Uh, building your army lists, you name it. We'll discuss it. And I'm very much looking forward to what Anne, Dane and Mark are going to be pulling out for their segments. Not a long video of this. Hopefully I'll keep it nice and simple for you. So, for episode one of Steve's somewhat seamless slot, uh, we are going to have a look at uh, a painting tutorial for uh, myself and Dane's blend version on uh, Necrons. And we're calling this a somewhat Egyptianish scheme uh, but first and foremost i shall take you in to show you which necron model uh, we're going to be painting it's going to be a rank and file necron warrior uh, just to keep things simple so you can see where we're applying uh, washes etc base colors let's crack straight on with it and here we have our necron warrior assembled from the sprue i've taken the more lines off him and he's ready to uh so his fresh coat of paint hit the battlefield and uh going to pick some Imperium forces off. So for this example, I'm going to be using Citadel's Corax White uh, to give a base coat. Uh, just remember when you're using uh, the uh, sprays, uh, remember your temperature. Uh, if it's too cold, uh, you'll end up with uh, globules uh, settling on the face of the model. Um, if it's too humid it might have the same effect. If you spray it too close, it might have the same effect also. So, you know, you want to keep a good Good distance um, the way I usually do it is um, I'm giving very short sprays uh, against the model uh, just one second burst rotating one second burst one second burst turn upside down turn upside down so I can get the underside and I'll do that maybe two or three very light passes so first things first let's get some undercoat on right there we go undercoat done uh, didn't take too long with this lad uh, two coats very quick coats of Corax white Nice even spread. Watch your temperature so you don't get a bobble on that because the Corox White, I've had experience before with it bobbling quite bad if you spray too much on. Um, nice bright undercoat uh, for when we move to the Retributor Armor Spray for the next pass. Uh, should really hopefully brighten that colour. Uh, right folks, that's the Retributor retribute Armor uh, base coat on. Um, Using the spray, um, it's very, uh, it's very difficult. Um, one of the tricks I've found is uh, you can heat the can up slightly uh, if you've got like a little fan heater or something. That makes it a lot easier. Sometimes if you're uh, if you're getting too close or it's too cold, as you spray apply a metallic, um, I've found that you can see the pigment bubble to the surface, and it doesn't get quite an even coverage. So if you can keep heating the can up every uh, two or three minutes as you're applying, um, that helps make it a fluid coat. Um, this is two passes on here. Uh, you can see it's a nice bright gold that's on there, nice and clean. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move to shading. Right, got that nice gold, we're gonna shade it. What we're gonna use? We're gonna use Reichland for a shade. So literally, I'm just going to apply it on, nice and thick. You might want to come with two quarts. That's up to you. I'm just making sure we've got plenty layered into that. Once you're dragging any excess away, if there's too much in places. So, there's the shade, wash coat on. Uh, right little fresh shade. What you can see it's picked out all the uh, crevices, cracks, 
little bits of detail on this uh, Necron Warrior quite nicely. But one thing it has done is obviously just taking the shine off that gold a little bit. So what we're going to start doing is building our gold layer back up again. And very simply, what we're going to do is we're going to get some uh, a pot of retributive armor, and we're going to get ourselves a small dry brush, and literally we're just going to tickle, uh, tickle the highlights of the armor back up just to give a, a bit of a shine back on the gold to start us off for our base. So very small, working small bits, don't overload your brush. And what you'll find is you just very lightly brush in the face. Just to bring the shine back up. There we go. Dry brush, retributor armor, just to bring the shine back up. Contrasts quite nicely with the right and flesh shade, sat in the crevices. Ready for our next layer. Right. Yeah. So we're on our next layer. Uh, what I just want to show you guys is um, where we've built up so far. So obviously we use retribute arm as a base uh, and what you'll notice is uh, just the right flesh shade really plays into that red. It's, an, it's a right orangey, orangey gold that's there on retribute armor. Our next layer that we're going to put across is auric armor gold and you'll notice immediately that has got a a more yellow tone to it. We want to keep those gold tones and just brighten through the uh, the color palette there. Uh, so we're going from oranges to, to yellows in this circumstance. So what we're going to do is, yet again, very simply, we're just going to get a little bit on the end of our brush, use an auric arm gold. And I'm just going to tickle. That's all we're doing is just tickle. And this will help keep the bright skin. Just keep it gently, you don't want to put it too much across the areas. Um, as you build these coats up, less and less should really be applied and that'll help get an edge highlight. Now on to the last of the gold highlighting. Uh, yet again, a dry brush method on this. Now, if you look at the Games Workshop uh, Citadel color guide, it tells you that really on the highlighting, you should be using, in some circumstances, a range of silvers, maybe such as Runefang Steel, or even Stormhorse Silver, to achieve an effect. Um, I'm not on this, because I've already done a test on a model using uh, Stormhorse Silver, and what I found is that it didn't quite get the effect that I wanted. Uh, you can see how the Storm of Silver's taken. It's left it kind of a distressed worn gold. And that's not what I want to achieve uh, with this uh, theme. I want it a nice bright gold, uh, not worn. I don't want to have that age elements to it. Having said that though, if you are wanting to weather your army, uh, accordingly using this scheme then I would suggest using Stormhold Silver but in this circumstance the um, next highlighting colour I'm going to be using is Liberator Gold the reason why I've chosen this is as you can see from the it's got the gold and it's also got a silver mix in there it's a bit of the two uh, together but it still has that main body of gold feel about it so it's not going to really uh, it's going to blend better I'm going to go very sparingly here uh, I've just got a little bit on the end of my brush and I'm just going to tickle the details. What I'm doing as I'm working, we have got edges running across. I'm just going across them like that so it picks up on the on the leading edge. Sometimes if you go a bit too daft, you can blank the colour completely and not get the desired effect that you're after, which is just an edge highlight if you can, and just a brightening. So that's our gold that allows us to move on to the next stage. Right folks, we are now on to some different colours. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, 
get these guys a bit of a regal feel using a regal green or well, to try and get a, an emeraldy effect something similar to what you might see on the uh dark angels color scheme um what we're going to do is we're going to be painting the carapace shoulder blades etc but for this example on this neck warrior we are going to do a shoulder blades and what we're going to start off with is first layer of warg flesh now uh, i water my paint stone i use a a, a, a floor improver uh, on some of my paints i don't use a floor improver on base paints i just use uh, water just to give it a, a loosen in the mix and literally I'm just going to use a medium layer brush here and I'm just going to get this stuck onto this bad lad nice and quick that's the wag flesh layer done on his carrot base swiftly moving on Let's not hang around with these guys when I get on the battlefield. Let's remember, I'm going to be using next good old trusty null oil. That's going to serve as a treat uh, for doing the shade on these shoulder blades. Now, when you do it, you have plenty on there. You want to run it into the crevices where it's touching against the uh, the gold armor. That will help mask off. Uh, mask off any uh, you know on straight lines etc give a nice uh, gradient color phasing between the two um, get plenty on don't be shy at it make sure you don't miss any bits and obviously give it plenty of time to cure off thereafter no oil on and dried so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go back to the wire uh, base layer, wag flesh base layer, and um, we're going to just just neaten up, retouch up the uh, the base layer in areas. Now I'll thin this down a little bit. Uh, I'm using here a small layer brush. I'm just going to thin it down. You don't be too vicious with uh, with touching back in on these guys. Um, so literally, I'm just going to pick the high points out just to bring the colour back through. Then we'll be ready to move on to our next layer. So we've retouched the base in using the wire flesh. So on the next layer, picking the edge highlights out. Now you can do this with dry brush if you want. Now on this occasion, I'm just going to use the small uh, layer brush. Do, 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 do. Small layer brush. And our next layer is going to be warp stone glow. It's a lovely colour. Uh, just remember, thin your paints. Uh, all that edge, two thin coats, does help. Uh, and what we're basically going to do here is we're just going to touch around on the highlights of the details. Now, what you can do as well is go around this a second time. And what we'll do as you go around the second time, just pick out the edges or close to the corners. And what I'll do is I'll brighten it even further using that colour. Uh, so what you're doing is you're building up repeat passes on corners that will eventually brighten and brighten and give you that edge highlight that you need. Very quick process to do. Second pass. I'm just going to go closer to the corners. I'm not going to do the full length. I'm just going to pick out the corners with the edges just to brighten up even further, which will help with the following highlight. So I'm not going through all the way through the lines. I'm just going to pick the corners out. So I get the full flank on the edge of that because it's quite a nice line. It's going to catch all the light. It's there to the corner, to the corner again. Corners, 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 corners. So it's two layers of highlighting. Moving on to the third layer, which we are going to use a third and final, shall I say, layer? Boot green. That's quite a 
quite a bright green colour. Uh, yet again, we're just going to water this down so it's a nice thin coat. Uh, you know, either flow improver or make sure you get a couple of droplets of water onto it, onto your wet palette as you're using it. Um, we're going to do even smaller corner areas here. We don't need to go through the full line. Uh, we just want to pick out edges. Just to give that final effect. Looks quite a contrast in colour. Once it dries off, that should look pretty nice. You can, if you want, go through it a couple of times just to really pick those edges out and finish them off. Depends on your style, however you want to go on highlighting. With these guys, I'm just going to go touch the edge there. And I'm going to tickle the edge there. And I'm just going to bring, bring the eye. on to the side as quick and as simple as that as the shoulder carapace done with an emerald green finish all I've done here as well folks is sometimes you might notice your highlights stick out a bit too much between the base color and the medium color so what you can do is if you get your base color and just really over water it on your palette so maybe it's four parts water to one part paint what you can do is make yourself a quick glaze and just just very lightly, uh, it wants to be a very thin coat, just pull it over all those colours and it should help just bring them back together if there's too much of a stage in between uh, the shades and the uh, the brightness that's going off there. So, we're on for the weapon next. Let's give this a go. Weapons, let's do some. Right, straight into it. We need to make some bad boy looks on this gun. And what we're going to do, a bit of a weird one, this is a bit of a backwards uh, application, so bear with me. Hopefully you'll find it fairly interesting. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the first base coat on the weapon of yellow. yellow. Now anyone who's used this colour before know uh, it's a bit of a pain to get an even coat. So obviously the usual uh, with my base coat, a couple of drops of water. Uh, and I'm actually going to make two or three passes at this. Uh, covering this weapon. I want to try and get the yellow as even as possible. Even as possible. So literally, I'm just going to use the medium layer brush. Got my paint. And off we go. A uh, couple of passes there. It's a, it's a bit of a swine to get an even coat on with the yellow. But if you just stay patient, don't lumber too much on, you should be able to get it. That's actually three passes on there. So what we're going to do, as I mentioned, it's a bit backwards how we're going to do this. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight a quick dry brush using white scar. And you'll see the reason why in a second when we move to the next phase. Literally, don't put too much on. You don't want to bleach it. It's pretty simple. Get yourself a, a small dry brush. And literally, you're just going to pick the highlights out very gently. You're just tickling over it, as we did the, with the armour. If you put too much on, you will bleach it, and you'll have to go back and base coat the yellow again, which is not what you want. So anyway, it's such a swine to get even in the first place. Right, so we've just uh, highlighted that using white scar. And then what we're going to do is we're going to apply bloodletter glaze it's a nice strong color very thin to apply and what that's going to do is well base color is yellow uh, mix that with a red you get an orange and this hopefully this should get a nice uh, luminescent feel about it with the white highlights already just picking up the edges underneath i'm not getting a shade brush to apply this nice and thick i just want to get maybe a uh, medium layer and i'm just going to brush it on you might want to apply a couple of coats of this um, as the first coat is just a bit too thin. Um, so a second pass really then makes that, that orange colour pop. Make sure that you get some brushed into the crevices to help with the uh, shading effect. Just like so. Whoops, went down my local JW to get some more blood letter and was told that they no longer manufacture it. Uh, was reliably informed that Angron Red Clear is just as good if you water it down. 
That's angry, Ron, red, clear. Nails. Right, so there we go. Two quarts of blood letter on. You can see it doesn't half pop. Got a nice orange color. Um, bit of a hint, leave uh, on your first course, let it dry and then apply the second quart on that blood letter. Um, you don't want it to get clumpy or too build up in areas. So, as you can see, the white from underneath has picked out the edges as well. It's brought uh, the edge in through that glazed coat of the blood letter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to, now we're gonna shade, a bit backwards this. Um, so we're gonna use Fusion Orange, keeping that color tone. And what we're gonna do is just literally get a slip on there. Make sure we're getting in the crevices and cracks. Right, so put the shade, the fusion orange shade on, and next we're gonna put the final bit on to the weapon, and we're gonna go back to your real yellow, and we're just going to dry brush very lightly the highlights back in, and that'll help make this orange color really pop. Uh, don't go too far overboard with this, because you'll completely ruin what you're trying to achieve. But it's just a light, yet again, that tickle, just to bring out the edge highlights. So there you go, your real yellow highlights on the weapon, and that's ready just for the little nicks and knocks, i.e. the power points and the glow to go on there. So next, what we're going to do is we're gonna move on to just very quickly touching in any uh, metallic areas, chains, bits of wiring, etc. We'll move straight into that. Right, onwards and upwards, straight in. Let's do some metal pipes, tubes, smash bases, innards hanging out, uh, cords, leads, uh, the, uh, the little bit on the gun here. Doo -doo -doo. Right, pretty simple, straightforward. I'm gonna start off, base coat, lead belcher. Fairly quick this, I'm gonna use a medium layer brush. Nice point, already got some, uh, got some prepped on my palette. And off we go. Our belcher on. See, we've got the metal pipes. Uh, to his eye socket. Uh, pipes here. The power pack on the, uh, the gauze. And obviously the pipes there. Next thing, we're going to apply non oil, magic oil. Uh, very straightforward, very quick. I'm not using a big um, shading brush. I'm just going to use the same medium layer brush. I just want to work this into the nooks and crannies and not touch anything, hopefully, that we've been painting up to this point. Literally, get your normal oil in there and let it work its magic. magic. Right, that's the null oil layer dried on the silver. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna build the highlights up. Uh, very simple, iron breaker is our next color. And all we're gonna do is, I'm using a small layer brush here, and all we're gonna do is just pick out the high points. Just to build it up, we're not covering the whole thing. We're just picking out the high points to, uh, to pick the highlights out. So on final layer of silver, just to bring out the final highlights, storm more silver. And literally, I'm just using a small layer brush here, and I'm going very sparingly, right on the points of the highlights. You don't want too much, that'd be overkill if you go too much. Just that finishing touch. Now we're into the 
fun bit. We're going to start playing with some Tesseract build-ups. Just give the glows on the power weapons and the eyes and the symbols, etc. So um, just a quick tip before we move on to that though, as you finish your silvers, if you find you go too heavy, what you can do is use no oil again over the, the entirety of the silver build-up and that'll just create a glaze layer and just help pull those colours back in. But also at the same time, if you find your silvers too bright, you can actually darken that down just a, just a tad. And right, okay, so white scar is our next layer and we're going to pick out the bits of detail that we want to... Uh, or we want to make a tesseract go on. So I'm going to start, for example, on these bad lines here. Now you don't have to make it an exact round circle as long as you get the majority of it and you get a nice white coverage on there because that white is really going to make the tesseract glow pick up. So what I've done is I've used white scar to pick out the eye lenses and the spots on the weapon, on the gauze rifle. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat here. Uh, what I've done is I've got a fine brush. And you can just see, I've just nipped the end of, of the fine brush to make myself a very teeny tiny dry brush. And what we're going to do is you want very, very little paint on this. Same again, white scar. You're just going to get a bit of tissue and you're going to knock dry them and the majority of the paint off it and what all we're going to do is we're going to just quickly back and forth so what we're going to want to do is catch the edge of the armor for a, a glow effect etc so you can do this anywhere that there's maybe the symbols or a bunch of symbols edge of armor you don't want straight lines coming off a fine brush because so i think that looks man-made you want to achieve a natural effect so you can see the crack on his armor here uh, i'm just going to put a little bit of white up there and when we put the tesseract on it it really looked like it's glowing up through his armor so anyway where you've got a symbol or armor edge that you want to highlight or similarly on the weapon here i'm just going to brush those edges off just to whiten them up so it'll pick some of the green off and make it look like the green's glowing across the barrel now for me, this is the most fun bit of all of these models, certainly yours and the next colour. Technical Tesseract Law. Wow, it's such a sick colour. Uh, what we're going to do is literally, I'm just going to get a medium layer brush and try not to have a mess. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to get plenty on my brush and I'm just going to highlight it over the areas that we just painted white. Um, literally, it's as you would use a shading colour. So what I'm doing is just going to lay that on out the white areas and I'm going to pull that down over his eye and we're going to lower a bit in his eye there and then on to his weapon now we can put a couple of passes over this depending on how strong you want the grain it's a pretty strong grain to start off with um, but what you'll notice is where we caught the edge of the weapon case in there for example it's going to pick some of the white the grain out so we on purpose want to be a bit sloppy. Um, the glow has no natural set boundaries. Uh, we just want to get it on there so it picks out those colors. There we go, that's the Tesseract glow on. You can see it has quite a nice effect, quite a striking glow. What we're gonna do though, just to finish that off, uh, we're gonna go back to white scar and we're just gonna just very gently apply we're not gonna apply this to all the tesseract glow that we've just put on just the key areas so the eyes I'm just gonna put a little spot in there and he's on the right do over the symbol using the edge of the brush I'm just going to pull the white back up there to make the symbol pop so there we go folks one completed egyptianish necron warrior hope you agree he looks the part 
Um, very quick and simple and easy to do to get lots of these out and batch so you can get them out on the field. We hope that you've enjoyed watching this tutorial video and that you've taken some tips and tricks away with you. Uh, obviously, do whatever you feel is necessary. It's your dynasty. If you're going to come up with your own dynasty, chop and change these elements, uh, chop and change some of the colours, uh, mix and match. Invention is great after all. Moving on, uh, please do keep your eyes peeled for the other videos that are coming out, tutorial videos, as we mentioned at the, at the top of this video, uh, Dean, Mark and Anthony will be releasing theirs in due course, so keep checking the CQ Gaming uh, for those. Also, please feel free, check our back catalogue of battle reports. Obviously we're in COVID restrictions at the moment, but there will be some more new battle reports coming up, uh, ninth edition, so please feel free to check those out. And obviously, as always, we can't stress this enough, uh, hit like, subscribe, leave a comment, press notifications, not just for us, but for any channel or any content that you're watching out there on social media. We can't stress how much it really helps people who do take the time to develop these videos and put the content out there. So, I'll leave you with these images. I hope you enjoy and see you next time on Steve's somewhat seamless slot. Ta-ta for now.